The truth about the rapture, ending the debate. Hey Frank. Yeah. What do you call a holy woman that works in your office? I don't know. None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, let's get started. Sorry. Welcome to Foundational Bible Teachings. So before we get started, let's pray. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, noten veshomer ekvarech, ללמד לי אדריכות להנהות אותנו, בדרך שבה עלינו ללכת על ידי פחת עינינו וזנינו ולבנו. למען תמסור לנו מרחמתך ידיעתך ותבונתך, ונירף נפלאות מתורתך. שרוע הקודש שלחת תנחה את כולנו אל כל האמת, ברכת לימוד המילה אליך בשם ישוע. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, giver and preserver of your word. Teach, instruct, and guide us in the way we should go by opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, that you may impart to us of your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. May your Holy Spirit guide us into all truth. Bless the study of your word in Yeshua's name. So to conclude this aspect of the debate regarding the existence of the rapture in scripture and in, in church history, we need a clear resolution and conclusion that addresses the fundamental issues and resolves the anti-rapturist arguments that they present to the world. These include presenting compelling biblical as well as non-biblical and non-canonical evidence and logical arguments. The top three arguments against the rapture are number one, the word rapture isn't found in the Bible. The second argument is that the doctrine of the rapture is not found in the Bible. And the third one, the concept of the rapture is a relatively recent doctrine with no other evidence of its teachings before 1830. I've already covered two of these arguments arguments. Tonight we're going to cover the third one. The doctrine of the rapture is not found in the Bible. Now the truth about the rapture is discerned through the evidence provided and that's what I'm going to be giving you tonight. When every argument is thoroughly addressed and understood, there's no more room for doubt. Refusal to acknowledge or accept this proof and evidence makes you a denier of this particular truth. So we've looked at two of the three major arguments that anti-rapturists use to deny any biblical rapture. Just as we've discredited and disproved the first two, tonight we'll address and examine the third argument to expose its fallacy, that the rapture teaching isn't found in the Bible. This is used by anti-rapturists to categorically deny that there's any rapture in the Bible. So sit back, take good notes, and prepare for this argument to be biblically dismantled. So before I address their argument, here's a few examples of anti-rapturists categorically denying any rapture in the Bible. So here are some false and deceiving statements. Dr. Matt O'Reilly, Theology Project, quote, the rapture simply isn't in the Bible. Now this may come as a surprise to some people who take it for granted that the rapture is a biblical concept, end quote. United Church of God, quote, the fact is that this word raptured with this whole concept, it's a new doctrine. It didn't come to light until the early 19th century, end quote. Here's a couple of them that I ended up getting from the YouTube channel that we have. Nehemiah X, there's no biblical rapture made up doctrine by evangelical church to sell books and movies. Nothing else after that. T. McGee, all happens on the last day. No rapture, no early exit. They preach a rapture and yet it's not in scripture. I'm coming for you, buddy. Rob Blake Slee, 4927. He says, quote, No rapture, not taught anywhere in the scriptures. Oh man, you'll feel foolish when this doesn't happen and the unbelieving world will have yet another reason to mock Christianity and God himself, end quote. Rob, you'll feel foolish after I prove in the scriptures that the rapture doctrine is actually there. And the reason Christianity and God is mocked is because of people like you. For these statements to be true, what these clowns are saying, the scripture has to be silent about it, but the Bible isn't. In fact, the Bible has much to say about the rapture, and it has much to say in its defense. The problem is, is that no one is listening. Question, what is the rapture? The doctrine of the rapture is simply the teaching of God taking certain people from one place and transporting them to another place. That's it. That's what the rapture is. The rapture, by the way, is not exclusive, like many people think, to the church. I found 18 raptures in the scriptures. Tonight we're going to be covering three of them. Now vocabulary.com defines rapture as coming us from the old French word meaning carried away. 
Understanding what the rapture actually is will help you recognize it when you're going to be reading in your Bibles. Based on what was recorded, Moses was aware of the rapture and he included it when he wrote down the Torah. Now you will discover references to the rapture or the transportation of people being carried from one place to another dispersed throughout the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, from pre-flood to post-flood, you're going to find rapture references plastered all throughout the scriptures. The three main rapture types in the Bible include being carried off or transported. Number one, from earth to heaven. Number two, from earth to earth. That means from one place to another. And the third one is being raptured from earth to hell. Yes, the verses are in the Bible. Read your Bibles. A comment was made to me in one of the uh, comments section. And the quote goes like this. You don't know how to read. There is no rapture in the Bible. End quote. For me, this is a very cocky statement. You post comments and statements without any biblical proof whatsoever. I want you to tell me with a straight face after this study the quote that you just gave me and I hope you're listening. There's another example, Chris Sanderson, 1736, quote, rapture is not biblical, end quote, nothing else after that. This is typical of these people whom I call Bible geniuses, scientists, and biblical sofa scholars. That's what these people are, eating Cheetos downstairs in their mother's basement. So Mr. Chris Sanderson, this one's for you, buddy, and the millions of other people who think um, no, that don't think, but basically just write like you. As I mentioned earlier, the rapture is the transporting of a person from one place to another, and that's it. And again, the rapture is not exclusive to the church. Like I said before, I'm going to be showing you three of the 18 raptures that I found in the Bible. So here are three examples and the three different destinations. Number one, Elijah. I want you to turn to 2 Kings chapter 2. We'll start reading in verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah. Did you get that? Take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went up with Elisha from Gilgal. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Verse 5 now. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Jump down to verse 9 now. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Elijah knew he was going. The sons of the prophets knew that he was going. They knew that the Lord was going to take him like somebody else that you know pre-flood and Elijah said I pray thee let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me look at verse 10 and he Elijah said thou hast asked a hard thing nevertheless if thou speaking to Elisha see me when I'm taken did you see these words when I'm taken from thee it shall be unto thee but if not it shall not be so so again Elijah knew that he was going to be taken away. So question, how was Elijah taken away? Answer, he went up. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and taught that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up. Did you get that? He went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So the whirlwind took Elijah and they went up. Yes, uh, Dr. Jordan B. Cooper, you have a question to say? Uh-huh. Okay. They didn't hear what you said, but I'm going to repeat it so everybody can hear you. Dr. Jordan said, In our church tradition, we do not believe that the rapture is something that is biblical. It never has been part of our tradition. I seriously think, Doc, that you should revise your church doctrines and you should start reading your Bible. Rapture number two, Philip. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 39. Philip was carried over or removed from the desert to Azotus. In Acts 8, 39, it says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went down his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, passing through he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. So here we have a second one. The first one, Elijah is taken from earth to heaven. Now we have Philip. The Spirit comes and picks him up, and he carries away Philip. He takes him from the desert, and he brings him to another city called Azotus. This is what a rapture is. 
being taken from one place and be brought to another. Yes, Patrick Miller, you have something to say? Okay, really? Again, for everybody's sake, I'm going to say it out loud. So this is what Patrick said. Why people think the rapture is real? It's nowhere in the Bible. End quote. Patrick, I just gave you two examples of two raptures. How can you even make the statement? In my face, you don't do that. It's very important that you stop listening to these people that are feeding you this crap. These people, if you show them a picture of an elbow and a knee, if their life depended on it, they wouldn't know the difference. So stop listening to them. Read your Bibles and believe what it says. That's all I can say to you. Third rapture, the unrighteous. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 40. These unrighteous people are going to be raptured from earth to hell. I will not expound on it. I'm just going to give you the verses. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. This rapture in Matthew chapter 24 verses 40 and 41 is not, I repeat, it is not a rapture of the church. If you believe in the rapture of the church and you're using this, the same advice I just gave them. You want to open your Bibles and read in context. The context starts in verse 37. Jesus gave you the context. So I repeat, it is not a rapture of the church. This time it's the unrighteous that are taken and gathered or raptured from earth to hell. Jesus gave the necessary information in the parable of the wheat and the tares. The context is the days of Noe. Matthew chapter 24, you start reading in verse 37 all the way up to 41. That's the context. When the flood came, the unrighteous were wiped off the face of the earth, but the righteous are the ones that stayed behind. This is what's happening in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 40, 41. This cleansing, this rapture, Jesus Christ is getting the millennial kingdom ready. There are two raptures happening in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, and the second one is in verse 40. And when Jesus raptures these people, these unrighteous from earth to hell, he's cleansing the land for the millennial kingdom. The millennial kingdom, if you remember the Bible study we did on the Sermon on the Mount, those are the people getting in. There is no unrighteous person getting into the millennial kingdom. That's what this rapture is. Let's keep going. So as I just said, the rapture happens prior to the entering in of the millennial kingdom, where only only the righteous make it in. The context of Matthew chapter 24 and 25 is the end of the world. I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight that. As we know it, the time of Jacob's trouble and the time of the heathen. And this is going to be culminating to the judgment of the nations, which you're going to find in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus is answering the questions the apostles asked in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3, including the end of the world. Jesus covers this in Matthew chapter 13, verse 30 and then verse 39 and 40 and then in Luke chapter 17 34 through 37. I'm just going to cover a couple of these uh, passages. In Matthew chapter 13 now verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. That starts giving you a lead where this is going. But gather the wheat into my barn. The wheat into the barn is the righteous people into the kingdom of heaven that Jesus started preaching in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Verse 39 now. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest again is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. In verse 40 now. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. So this is the context, the end of the world. Look at 41 now. The Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His millennial kingdom all things that offend them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now the question is, where will these people be gathered? Jesus answers this question in Luke 17, 37. They will be gathered where the eagles will be gathered. So turn with me now to Luke chapter 17. The context is 34 through 37. I'm only reading verse 37 now. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither shall the eagles be gathered. And if you're curious where the eagles will be gathered, read Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28. Revelation chapter 19 verses 17 and 18 and verse 21. So getting back to what I was saying. What words were used to express the rapture? We just saw in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Elijah went up. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 39. Philip was caught away. Just as they will be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17. They are the same words. They're going to be caught up. In Acts chapter 8 verse 39. Philip was caught away. 
If you read 1 Thessalonians 4.17, they shall be caught up. What about in Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 and 41? One was taken. What more do you need? Like I said, I found 18 of them. These people were transported from one place to another. Where they were transported to, it doesn't matter where. What's important is that there is something happening where somebody is being picked up, or a group of people, they're being picked up and they're being transported somewhere else. That's what the rapture is. If that's what the scriptures say, believe what it says. So here's some homework for you. I want you to find the other 15 raptures that I found, and I want you to find the words that are used in the Bible. There may be, maybe you might start understanding that maybe this is a rapture. Hey, listen, after 18 examples, if you still don't believe, listen, there's no more hope for you. There's nothing else I can do for you here. And just to give you a clue, just in case, they're all going up. So here's a few more false and deceiving statements that anti-rapturists make. United Church of God, quote, There is no rapture. Buddy, I just finished giving you three of them. Eric Reed, lead pastor of the Journey Church in Lebanon, USA, quote, Is the rapture taught in the Bible? He's asking a question. The answer is no, end quote. Eric, buddy, stop leading people astray and start reading your Bible. A pastor? Hmm. Dick Harfield, layperson. Quote, the rapture should be considered unbiblical, not just because the word rapture does not appear in the Bible, nor because the concept does not actually appear, but because it was a 19th century invention. End quote. On uh, our YouTube videos, going back to T. McGee's comment that I mentioned before, all happens on the last day, no rapture, no early exit. They preach a rapture, and yet it's not in the scripture. All of these people that I mentioned, they are as worthless as a cucumber in the middle of an ocean. That's what you guys are worth, all bunched up together. The sons of the prophets in approximately 890 BC knew God moved people around, but today the quasi totality of biblical scholarship have educated their blind followers to the level of imbecility. If they would just read their Bible, Bibles. A lot of these teachers are going to be left out there in a the cold, and that's where they belong. Here's another one for you. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 7. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too, speaking of Elijah and Elisha, stood by Jordan. Look at verse 16. And they, speaking of the sons of the prophets, said unto him, Elisha, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. You saw him going up into heaven. Why do you want to go see where this guy went? Look at what they answer. Lest preadventure, just in case the Spirit of the Lord hath taken him up, He's going up and cast him on some mountain or in some valley. That's what the rapture is. Taking somebody from one place and bringing him to another. They knew this. What about Obadiah in 1 Kings? Go find the scriptures. That's another guy that knew God moved people from place to place. People became dumb in the 21st century. That's what it looks like. So these prophets, they were aware of God's power to take people from one place, bringing them to another, the way that He wanted and whenever He wanted. Now call it a rapture, call it catching up, call it caught away, taken, whatever you want to call it, they were taken. That's what a rapture is. I don't know why people are freaking out. So between now and the second coming, there's four more raptures about to happen. You don't believe me? Read the scriptures and please don't leave stupid comments. To you believers now, Romans chapter 16 verse 17 and 18. Look at what Paul says. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. I just gave you a doctrine, the doctrine of the rapture. It is found in the scriptures. And then you've got these bozos out there with no lights on their heads. They're coming in and they're saying, no, there is no rapture. So they're coming against what I just gave to you biblically. I just backed it up with the Bible. I found 18 raptures in the Bible. Prove me wrong. And I repeat what Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division or offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Avoid these people. Verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. If you believe that there's no rapture, God calls you simple, simple-minded. Go see what that word means in the dictionary. It's interesting because today's scholarship seems to be tied up of these doctors, theologians, scholars. They read the back of a cereal box. By the time they finish reading, they're going to get to the bottom left of the box. There's a little certificate. You cut it out, you put your name, and then you put it on your wall. 
That's where these people are at. For me, that's where they got their understanding from. And if you're saying no, prove it to me, biblically. Jeffrey Curtis Poor, pastor, quote, Why I don't believe in the rapture? This is his second reason. It's not found in the Bible. The Bible simply does not support a rapture theology, end quote. Excuse me, what did you just announce to your congregation and the rest of the world? And you call yourself a pastor? I just gave you three, four places where you can go look. Prove me wrong that that's not a rapture. What is a rapture according to you? That's what I'm asking. So are you calling God a liar? The Bible simply does not support a rapture theology. Jeffrey, my boy, I got one question for you. What do you call someone who contradicts the words that God spoke? Let me give you a clue. God explicitly said in Genesis Genesis 2 17 and the day that thou eats thereof thou shalt surely die pretty clear then someone comes along nonchalantly and he contradicts God's words and he says thou shalt not surely die by the way you're gonna find that in Genesis 3 4 what did Jesus say in John 8 44 ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father will ye do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because the truth is not in him and you call yourself a pastor when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, speaking of the leaders of Israel, speaking to the Sadducees, you do err not knowing the scriptures and you call yourself a pastor. Do you know how many millions of pastors out there are like that? Are you in because of the money? Scoundrels. You are a leader in the body of Christ and that's the coming out of your mouth? No, I didn't want to say it. Like I was saying, you're the leaders of the body of Christ. Just like the Sadducees were the leaders of Israel. You're leading people astray and those following you are as blind as you are. That's a sad state of affairs. Advice to you out there sitting, having your feet tucked under these people's tables. Don't let these scholars, these professors, these pastors, ministers, priests, teachers, theologians, PhDs, THDs, or whatever they like to call themselves, bamboozle you into believing anything biblical and I'm including myself in that gang yes Jeffrey move over I'm putting myself in that gang too you heard the case great as Acts 17 11 says check me out check them out confront me confront them that's your job be as an honest judge to render a fair judgment for yourself not for anybody else don't go about regurgitating the sh that comes out of these people's mouths because not only do they look foolish but you're also looking foolish like them and if you're gonna say something make sure you're gonna check it out don't spit it out because you heard and it comes out of your mouth and this goes for the rest of you that I've heard that God is a myth there is no God I'm telling you now God is real God is not a myth what I'm suggesting is that you listen to this three-minute video get salvation because salvation is found in Jesus Christ plus minus nothing